good to see you today. Take your Bibles, if you will, and go ahead and find your place in the Gospel of Luke. Luke is in the New Testament. It's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, okay? And so go there, if you will, chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, and verse 36. We're going to read a little bit more scripture than we normally do today, 36 down through verse 50. You know, sometimes, uh, by the way, let me ask you something. How many of you, how many of you drive to Soul Quest Church and you do not live in Jackson, Tennessee? Raise your hand. Look around, folks. Wow. How many live in Jackson? Raise your hand. I think the out-of-towners got you beat. Hey, you know what? That's, a, that's all right. That's what you want, isn't it? We don't want to just be a Jackson church. We want to be a regional church where people can come in from all over and experience what God is doing. As a matter of fact, we got a little saying that we talk about and we say all the time, a church alive is worth the drive. We got two families that drove up yesterday all the way from the Pensacola, Florida area. Yeah. Hey, no other reason. They didn't have a business trip. They just drove up to worship with Would y'all raise your hands, all you Florida? Give it up for our Florida friends. Amen. Yeah. What is that? Quick. It's the devil. Kill him. In Jesus' name. Turn him down. Luke 7. Don't turn me off, baby girl. Put those earplugs in a little deeper there if you have to. Luke chapter 7. It's so good to see you today. We're starting a brand new sermon series entitled Love Works. As I mentioned to you earlier, it goes with our month of August as we are going to be experiencing Love Week starting the 24th. And I'll also tell you more about that. It'll uh, finish up on the 28th with a concert downtown Jackson at the Amp. And, uh, and then, of course, the 30th is our 316 Sunday where we'll have a big high attendance day here and expecting God to do great, great things. Our attendance that the goal that day is 316, 316 Sunday. I'll be preaching uh, from John 316, and we are expecting 316 people to get saved, right? Well, anyway, I don't know about that one, but uh, high expectations, amen? Luke chapter 7, verse 36, let's look at that together. Today we kick off our Love Works series with Love forgives. How many of you need forgiveness from time to time? Come on, all of us do, right? If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying in church right here. We all need forgiveness, don't we? Let's read this passage together. The Bible says in Luke 7, 36. Now, one of the Pharisees was requesting him to dine with him. And he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And there was a woman in the city. That phrase, in the city, is not as much talking about a geographical location as it is something else. We'll get there in a moment. Who was a sinner? And when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, and she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hair of her head, and kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. As a matter of fact, this is high dollar perfume. Let's read on. Verse 39. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, he was thinking in his own mind, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him that is a sinner. I love this. Look what Jesus answered and said. Jesus answered him, Simon, this is the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. And he replied, say it, teacher. A money lender who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged correctly. And turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I mean, look at her. Do you see her? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, 
but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. For this reason, for this reason I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. For she loved much, but he who has forgiven little loves little. Then he said to her, your sins have been forgiven. Those who were reclining at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins? Who is he? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. Father in heaven, I pray that you bless your word today. Lord, that you would teach us what it means to have the freedom of forgiveness in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we live in a world today that's starving for forgiveness. Do, do you realize that? I mean, we do. We live in a world today that is absolutely starving, and they're searching for forgiveness. They're searching for, for forgiveness from God, and they're searching for forgiveness from somebody else. Why? Because they messed up. And I want to tell you today, according to the Word of God, we all desperately need forgiveness. And the sad tragedy is that the church, the body of Christ, ought to be the first place someone can come and find forgiveness. I said it ought to be. But in so many churches in America today, people don't feel that way. Whether it's true or not, the perception is, man, I can't go to that church because I won't fit in. I don't dress right. I did something that they wouldn't approve of. Therefore, I don't fit in and, and they'll never forgive me. They'll never accept me. How sad that is. And Soul Quest Church has been built upon the very fact that if God has forgiven us, then we need to turn around and be willing to forgive others. Amen. And, the, and people in this world, in Jackson and all around the area, they're starving, they're starving for forgiveness. And this story really introduces us to several personalities. Notice a Pharisee, his name is Simon. Then you've got the unnamed woman that many people believe was Mary Magdalene. Remember her? She was a prostitute. I've often said in so many churches, some of you from Florida know this, I've said many, okay, I wish there were so many pimps and prostitutes and drug addicts in our church that there was no more room on the front rows that all the members had to sit in the back. Amen. Mary Magdalene, the Pharisee, two unnamed debtors, and Jesus, of course, is in this story. And the focus, the focus of this story is the love and the forgiveness of God. As I think about this story, I'm reminded of three things, and I want to give them to you, and I hope that you'll jot these three things down. They'll be on the screen. Write these down. Number one, number one, I want you to see there's freedom in being forgiven by God. There's freedom there's freedom in being forgiven by God. So many times we are almost like, have you ever driven down the road and seen like, maybe, uh, let me use a, a big dog, maybe a pit bull, and he's got this huge chain around his neck, and he's tied to a tree, and he's got about five feet of chain, and he's just kind of stuck there. So many people are like that dog and that chain. They're chained to their sins. They're chained to themselves. They're chained to their cir present circumstance. And God says, I want to unchain you by forgiving you. I want to unchain you by forgiving you. And there's freedom. There's freedom in being forgiven by God. Psalm 32, 1 says this. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. The Bible says in Romans 4, 8, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Let me give you two things to chew on and think about. Number one, I want you to see the need, the need for forgiveness. The need for forgiveness. You and I need forgiveness from God. We absolutely need it. We have to have it. 
The Bible says in verse 37, let's just back up and look at that verse. Chapter 7, verse 37, it's very interesting. The Bible says, and there was a woman, many believe she was Mary Magdalene. Remember her. The Bible says there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. Now that phrase, in the city, was, I don't think just speaking of this geographical location. The words in the city are not, they're used also to describe her reputation. Her reputation was not good. Her reputation preceded her. The Pharisees knew who she was. You ever just, how many of you are from a small town? All right, you know how it was growing up in that small town and you knew somebody, whether they, they were that way now or not, but maybe sometime in their life, maybe in the last year or two or three years, they had done something crazy, something stupid, and their reputation went with them for the rest of their life in that small town. Everybody knew who this woman was. The Pharisees knew who she was. She was probably a prostitute. According, look in verse 39. The Bible says in verse 39. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who this, what sort of person this was or this woman is and is touching him that she is a sinner. She was a prostitute, more than likely. And the Bible gives the same description of you and I. It doesn't say that we're a prostitute, but Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us are in need of forgiveness. Every one of us are in need of love. Every one of us are in need of a Savior. Forgiveness. We have the need, the need for forgiveness. 1 John and verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves. Isaiah 64 and verse 6, God compares our good deeds to filthy rags. In the sight of God, our best works are filthy rags. We've got children in here. I'm not going to go into the details, but do, it, do a study on that. Filthy rags are good deeds. Listen, friend, I don't care how good you think you are. How good we think we can be, our good deeds are never good enough to get us in God's presence. We need God's forgiveness. We need his forgiveness. Psalm 55 in verse 5, 51 in verse 5, David said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Man calls sin an accident. God calls it an abomination. Folks, we're living in a day today where we minimize sin. It makes us feel better, right? I mean, we kind of minimize sin. We don't call it black and white. We call it gray. We call sin a chance, but it's a choice. We call it a defect, but it's depravity. We call it an error, but it's enmity. We call it luxury, but it's leprosy. We call it a mistake, but it's madness. We call it weakness, but it's willfulness. We absolutely need forgiveness from God. We need God to forgive us. We need God to forgive us. We need forgiveness. You see, that's the need of forgiveness. But number two, the ease of forgiveness. The ease. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? Well... Verse 48, look what he says. The Bible says in verse 48, Then he said to her, Your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven. Thank you, girl. I'm sweating like crazy. I need a T.D. Jakes rag today. But that'll work. If I get tissue on me, just don't laugh at me, all right? I'm preaching. Verse 48, Then he said to her, Your sins have been forgiven. The ease of forgiveness Verse 48 reminds us, for Jesus, it was simple. It was simple. It shows that, number one, there, there's no person God won't forgive. No person. I mean, I've had people tell me, man, God can't forgive me. God won't forgive me. I've done this and I've done that. Man, I've been in a, in, in a trailer home before witnessing to a young man who was so high when I was in there and all his little buddies and they were laughing and carrying on when I was sharing the gospel and finally the convicting power of God came upon that group of, of young men even in their condition even they were, they were stoned out of their mind the spirit of God began to fall in that place 
And all of a sudden, the one that was smoking the pot right in front while I was sharing the gospel, he said, listen, as tears began to swell up in his eyes, he said, God can't forgive me. Look at this. Look at this. Jack Daniels, bottles, liquor, everywhere, all over the place. God can't forgive me. And I looked at him in his eyes, and I said, yes, sir, God wants to forgive you, and he can forgive you, and it's easy for him to do. He took your sin on the cross. He took your sin on the cross. You see, there's no person God won't forgive. She was filthy. She was vile. And she was depraved. If God can forgive a harlot, a call girl, a serial killer, he can forgive you and he can forgive me. There's freedom in being forgiven by God. You see, there's no person God won't forgive. There's no person that God won't forgive. There's no past that God can't forgive. There's no past that God can't forgive. Forgiveness in the Greek means sent away. Sent away. Psalm 103, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west. Isaiah 38, 17, You have cast all my sins behind your back. Your sins are sent away away. Write down Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Colossians 2 verse 14. Listen to what it says. Having concealed out the, cer uh, the certificate of debt consistent of decrees against us which was hostile to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross. Jesus took your sin and took my sin upon himself. It was literally nailed to the cross. Oh, I'm telling you folks, I, I'm so glad that I, I serve such a big God. God wants to forgive. God can give. There's no past that God cannot forgive. If you need forgiveness of God today, I want to tell you, reach out and take it because it's there. It's been bought, it's been paid for by a bloody cross, empty tomb, and a glorified Savior. He wants to forgive you. Number one, there's freedom in being forgiven by God. Number two, there's freedom in forgiving oneself. Boy, isn't this hard sometimes? I mean, isn't it? I mean, isn't it hard sometimes? I mean, you, you've done something wrong and you've done something really bad and you ask God to forgive you and, 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 and it seems like that every time you go and you look in the mirror and you're brushing your teeth, you're, 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 looking, you're looking deep down in your own eyes and you think, man, I did that. I can't believe I did that. And we just oftentimes continue to bring that up. There's freedom, but there's freedom in forgiving oneself. Many are chained to their sinful past. What is it that... You did. Don't bring it up. Don't think about it. Because what happens is we begin to think about what we did in the past and we can never go forward with God in the future because we're chained to the past. It's time to break the chain in Jesus' name and move on with your life. Move on with your life. You see, many are chained to their sinful past and others are, are cheated by satanic power. By satanic power. Simon, the Pharisee, played... The part as a, the devil's advocate in verse 39. All he chose to see was her dirty, defiled past. That's what the devil does, isn't it? He often reminds us of our past. Listen, every time he reminds you of your past, you need to remind him of his future. He, he, he's, he always wants to remind us of our past. Revelation 21.10 tells us that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Satan is a con man. That's what he is. He sets the traps, and then he accuses us once we have fallen into the traps. The Holy Spirit of God convicts us, but the devil condemns us. 
Write it down. The Holy Spirit of God convicts us. It's the devil that condemns us. Romans 8 and verse 1. There is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. There's freedom in being forgiven by God. There's freedom in being forgiven or forgiving oneself. And then, really, we're going to spend the rest of our time here real quick. There's freedom in forgiving other people, others. Sometimes this is the hard one, isn't it? We forgive others, first of all, because God forgave us. Ephesians 4.32. You know that verse? You need to memorize it. If you're having a hard time forgiving somebody else, memorize this verse. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Write it down. Let's look at it together. Ephesians 4.32. How many of you memorized this verse by singing a song when you were younger? Just Austin. Oh, Nancy. Okay, a few more. Sonia. 4.32. Y'all afraid I'm going to make you come up here and sing it, aren't you? Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Do, do, doodly do, Ephesians 4.32. Yeah. Remember that? You don't remember that. You weren't in church. That, all right. Think about that, though. Listen, look at it. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Why should I forgive that person? Why? Because God forgave you. That's why. <laughs> because God forgave you. This is not a natural tendency of ours, is it? <laughs> but it is a spiritual responsibility. When someone sins against you, it's my responsibility as a child of God, it's your responsibility as a child of God to extend forgiveness to that person. But also, number two, we forgive others not only because God forgave us, but we forgive others because we are followers of Christ. He forgave us, so we must forgive other people. Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15. You can look, look at that later. Somebody once said, to forgive the whole world to me is no chore. My only problem is my neighbor next door. Huh? Right? Let me tell you just real quickly what forgiveness is not. Write these things down. They're not in your notes. Make room and write them down. What is, forgi what, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is not what? Ten things. Just real quick. Write them down. Number one, forgiveness is not approving or diminishing sin. You know, we have a little phrase around here. If you're a newcomer, you're a first-timer, we say this all the time. We're just a bunch of messed up people. But I want you to understand, friend, listen to me. God never intended his children to be, to stay in a messed up state. We're messed up because we're sinners. But God wants us to become more like him every single day. And forgiveness is not approval or approving or diminishing some sin. You know, don't say, hey, well, you know, it's no big deal. Everybody sins. It's no big deal. Well, you know what? Here's the deal. It is a big deal because God died for that sin. Forgiveness is not enabling sin. Number one, it's not approving sin. It's not enabling sin. Number two, for example, you, you can have a, a friend who is an addict. You can forgive them without enabling them in the future. Forgiveness also is not denying a wrongdoing. Well, it just, you know, it, did, it, it didn't happen. We sweep it under the rug. It, it, you know, I just pretend like it never happened. I, I didn't let it really affect me. It's not denying a wrongdoing. Number four, it's not waiting for an apology. Well, I'll forgive that person as soon as they apologize to me. It's not waiting for an apology. I'll forgive them as soon as they apologize. No. No, we have to forgive. It's, forgiveness is not forgetting. Mm. It's not forgetting. We forgive and we forget, right, right, right? No, no. Somebody's been raped or they've been molested or they've been abused or they've been cheated on. You think they're going to forget that? It's impossible. We say, well, Nehemiah says that God remembers our sins no more. 
What about that, preacher? What about that? If God forgets and God doesn't see them anymore, first of all, God is an all-knowing God and God's sovereign and God, listen, God sees and knows everything. So, I, so what I think he means, but it doesn't mean forget, I don't think. I think he's all-knowing, he's all so he just chooses to see us as new creations and he chooses to work for a new future. It's not forgetting. Forgiveness is not ceasing to feel the pain. The Bible says all the tears are going to be wiped away, but not until we see Jesus. We're going to have pain, right? Forgiveness is not a one-time event. Sometimes people keep sinning, so we've got to keep forgiving them. It's something that is a regularly required in our lives. It's also, number eight, it's not neglecting justice. Forgiveness is not neglecting justice. You can forgive someone and call the police and have them arrested at the same time. You can forgive somebody and still testify against them in court. Forgiveness is not neglecting justice. Forgiveness is not trusting. It's not trusting. You say, I don't know about that. Think, think that through. It's not trusting. You say, well, my dad molested me. Can he babysit my kids? No way, Jose. Tru look, look, write this down. Trust is built slowly, but lost quickly. You must be, be rebuilt over time. If you've got marriage problems and you're having maybe an affair or something happened in a marriage, you can forgive, but it takes a while to build that trust back up, right? It's not trusting. Number 10, it's not reconciliation. Now think about that. Well, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll forgive him. We'll be buddies again. We'll hang out. We'll, everything will be back to normal. Not, not, not necessarily. You see, it takes, takes one person to forgive, but it takes two people to reconcile. And our responsibility is not their responsibility. Our responsibility is our responsibility, and that responsibility is to say, hey, I forgive you for whatever it is. Somebody come up and start playing something for me. Here's the deal. Look at me. Look at me. Here's the deal. In a crowd this size even today, there's no doubt in my mind that some of you and some of us, what we need today is we need the forgiveness of God. And I thank God, listen to me, I thank God when it comes to related to salvation. I thank God when I was 16 years of age. Living in sin as a 16 year old. I, I thank God that on that day in October of 1983 that I came to an altar at a youth rally. At First Baptist Church in Milan, Tennessee, and I let, sat down and, and, or knelt down before God at the altar, and I said, God, I need your forgiveness. God, please forgive me. And that day, that day, praise God, God forgave me of my sins, and I gave my heart and life to Jesus. But there's something else about being forgiveness of God. It doesn't stop there. We got to ask God to forgive us daily. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, well aren't you perfect after salvation? Absolutely not. You still sin. So every time we sin, we need to come before a holy God, humbling ourselves before him and telling him, God, I'm sorry. I turned my back on my sin and God, I need your forgiveness again. Well, doesn't God get tired of that? <laughs> No, because he loves us and he wants us to live clean lives. He wants us to repent and grow and become more like him. Sin less, sin less. But when we sin, when we mess up, we acknowledge that. And don't blame other people. Look in the mirror, folks, right? It's me, it's me, it's me in the need of forgiveness. It's me, it's me in the need of repentance. It's me, it's not anybody else, it's me. It's me. And bow before a holy God. 
say, oh God, it's me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to cleanse me. I've messed up. And then number two, we need to forgive ourselves. And some people have a hard time with this. Every time they look in the mirror, they see themselves and they're reminded of what they did. And they, they have a hard time. Listen to me, friend. If God has forgiven you, forgive yourself and move on. Just move on. Yeah, you messed up. Who hasn't messed up? Well, what I did was worse. Listen, friend. Sin is sin in the eyes of God. Yes, some sins have greater consequences. But sin is sin and we've all messed up. We've all messed up. Stop beating yourself over the head. Listen, that's not, that's not God. That's the devil condemning you. If you've asked God to forgive you, He's, He's cleansed you. He's forgiven you. He's given you a brand new look on life. Go on. Go on. Number three. The hardest things in the world is to forgive somebody who's done us wrong. And you know what? It's not even hurting the other person. It's hurting us. We're the one chained. We're chained to the tree like the dog is. Not free. We're not free. Listen, if you want freedom today, let that person go. Just forgive them. Just forgive them. I'm not saying you're going to be their best friends for the rest of your life. There may not even be reconciliation. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to forgive them. The world hated Jesus, hated him, put him on the cross. And he turned around and he said, Father, get this, get this, get this. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Wow. Wow. Is there somebody in your life that you're holding this grudge towards? Is there somebody in your life that you won't let go? As long as you don't let go, you're not going to be able to move on with God and live a victorious Christian life. Let go. Let go. Forgive. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all, all, all unrighteousness no matter what you've done he'll forgive you he'll forgive you let me ask you something as it relates to salvation have you been forgiven have you trusted Christ have you given Jesus your life have you as the music play, plays softly let me ask you something if you've never been saved today if you've never said yes to Jesus like I did at 16 years of age would you say yes to him today would you I want to say it's very simple it is simple but at the same time are you willing to give him your life your life are you if you'd like to be saved today and they receive his forgiveness would you pray this prayer with me but pray it to God just simply say dear God I know you love me I know you love me Jesus I know you died for me. I know you took my sin upon yourself. I know you were buried. And I know you rose again the third day. God, I need your forgiveness. Please forgive me. I turn my back on my sin. And I turn my life to you. Jesus, be my Lord and be my Savior today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me.